Okay, so I will be discussing the functional properties and bread making quality of ancient wheats cultivated in Belgium and the Netherlands. What can you expect over the next 15 minutes? First, a bit closer to the microphone. Okay, like this? Okay. Uh, first, I will give some background on the ancient wheats and why there's an increasing interest in them. Then I will discuss the materials and methods I use to obtain the results, so divided in four subcategories, and finally a conclusion. So first, some background. There actually is an increasing interest in the ancient wheats from consumers because they think it contains no or less gluten. They think it's healthier or maybe easier to digest. But also from the bakery industry where there's a need for innovation, so uh, the ancient wheats could be used there as well. And then finally from researchers like us, because we want to know where lies the difference with uh, modern bread wheat and can we use them in bakery products. There are two projects in Belgium uh, working on these uh, alternative grains in general, um, among which are the uh, ancient wheats. So first, Alter Grain, where you learned a little bit about from my colleague Joost uh, just before the break. So they have experimental fields and they focus mainly on cultivation and the nutritional properties, among others. And the project that I'm working on is called Alter Bake. Uh, we focus on commercial samples and then we uh, investigate the functional properties and the application possibilities. But also a bit the composition and digestibility um, of the Asian wheats and alternative cereals. So uh, the three ancient wheats that I'm going to um, discuss today are first einkorn or Triticum monococcum, which is the oldest of the ancient wheats. Uh, then emmer wheat or Triticum dicocum, uh, which is together with einkorn a hulled wheat species. And then finally Corazan, Triticum tyrannicum, where the most known variety is Kamut. The materials and methods. Uh, for my results, I use the same uh, ancient wheat species uh, cultivated in Bottelare by Altered Grain uh, over two harvest years, 2016-2017. But we also received three emmer wheat uh, samples from Alex Wieland from the Netherlands in the Zeeland province. And finally, also a commercial sample as a reference per ancient wheat type, uh, also from Dutch origin. As a wheat reference, we use the mean of six bread wheat varieties cultivated in Belgium with harvest year 2016. So the kernels, the cereals were harvested and then they were transported to our lab in Ghent, Belgium, where we determined kernel characteristics. This was then uh, milled to refined flour using a lab scale Bühler mill, uh, where milling properties were determined. Then with the refined flour, uh, we looked at some functional properties, for example, zeleny sedimentation and alveograph of Chopin. And then finally, we also baked breads according to the Belgium standards. So some results from kernel characteristics shortly. When we compare the ancient wheats to modern bread wheat, we can say that einkorn and emmer wheat are statistically smaller um, than bread wheat and corazan has a larger kernel. We actually saw the same trend uh, in the 1,000 kernel weight, and we also had a linear correlation between 1,000 kernel weight and the kernel size, which is logical. The larger the kernel, the more 1,000 kernels would weigh. And then finally, test weight. Uh, we saw no statistical differences between the Asian wheat and bread wheat, um, where we could conclude that test wheat is not a good parameter to select. Uh, which is the case if you compare bread wheats. So if it has a higher test weight, it would have a, a higher flour yield. Then some milling properties. Uh, here you can see the flour yields for einkorn uh, on the left in orange, emmer wheat in blue, and corazon in green. Uh, when we compare it to bread wheat, uh, which was about 70% in flour yield, we could see that emmer wheat and corazon had similar, uh, maybe sometimes a bit higher, a bit lower, depending on harvest year and variety, than bread wheat, which was not the case for einkorn. Einkorn was actually very difficult to mill. It had a very light flour, so it clogged the mill a lot, making it impossible to leave while milling. Uh, also, a lot of flour was still stuck to the bran uh, afterwards, where there was also a lot of loss, making that the uh, flour yield there was the lowest. So the flour fractions, as you can see on the far right, we have the bread wheat reference. Um, when we compare fraction, we could say that bread wheat has about 17% break flour fraction, about 71% of reduction flour and 10% uh, finisher fraction, which is the flour that comes from dusting of the bran and the shorts. 
when you look at einkorn, you could say that the finisher fraction there is actually higher. This is because the bran didn't separate easily or too easy, depending on your view things, of course, um, making that a lot of flour was still stuck there. So when you dust it off, it's logical that that fraction is also higher. Then the break flour fraction from einkorn was also higher in comparison to bread wheat, making the reduction flour the lowest fraction. And then emmer wheat and corazan had actually a similar profile with a lower finisher fraction and lower break flour fraction in comparison to bread wheat, making the reduction flour fraction the highest. Then functional properties. Uh, first of all, we have zelni sedimentation, which is an indication for the protein quality. So as you can see, the protein quality of the ancient weeds here uh, depicted was very low for einkorn. A lot of them were even lower than 10 milliliters. Um, so normally it should be much higher, even to 35 to 39 of a zelenia sedimentation value. So this says something about protein quality. What about protein quantity? Uh, as you can see here is the protein content. We also saw in literature that the ancient weeds contained uh, more protein, uh, and this is also uh, depicted here. Uh, we also compared harvest years, so 2016 is um, presented in a striped line, the other 2017 is presented in uh, full color. So we could also see that the 2016 actually had a lower protein content. So that's protein quality and protein quantity, but the ancient weeds also uh, contain gluten. Here you can see the gluten uh, index, which is an indication for the gluten strength. For bread wheat, this should be at least above 95, preferably above 98%. As you can see, the ancient wheat uh, species were much, much lower, with the highest value of 60%. You can see also that einkorn is not depicted here. This is a picture of the so-called gluten forming of einkorn, so it was not, uh, we could not determine it using the conventional method. Also, some of the emmer wheat species from 2016 had no gluten forming potential. Then next up is a Brabender farinogram. Uh, when we compare dough development time, which is the time it takes to reach maximum consistency, we could also see that um, einkorn had a lower dough development time and Emmer wheat and Corazan had a higher dough development time in comparison to modern bread wheat. The stability, which is the time it takes to remain uh, stable at maximum consistency, we could say that it was the lowest for einkorn, but also emmer wheat and Corazan had a lower stability than um, bread wheat. Then the degree of softening, the breakdown, was the highest for einkorn, but all of the ancient wheat species had a higher breakdown than bread wheat. Then the Chopin alveograph for the dough properties, we saw that Corazan had a more rigid dough structure. Um, Einkor, on the other hand, was very difficult to handle. It was too sticky, so during the method you have to cut out some rounds, which was not always possible with Einkorn. For emmerweed, a lot of um, a lot of the quality depended on the harvest year and on the variety but it was a bit more extensible. And then finally, for functional properties, we have the starch gelatinization curve. You can see that the start of the gelatinization is actually at the same time and about at the same temperature as modern bread wheat. The peak viscosities of the ancient wheats were lower as well as the end viscosities. And then finally, we have the bread making quality of the ancient wheats. So, uh, as you can see from left to right, are the breads that we baked uh, with 100% of einkorn, emmer and corazan flour from the commercial samples, because when I have to give you all of the breads that we baked, it would be too much. So you can see it on site, we also have it confirmed that the volume increases with einkorn having the lowest bread loaf volume and corazan the highest of the ancient wheats, but they were all still lower than modern bread wheat. When you compare colors, uh, you can see that einkorn, I don't know if it's very clear to you, but to me it is, that einkorn is more yellow from crumb color uh, and corazan as well, making it actually, uh, I think it's a very nice color to give to a bread a bit more yellow. So einkorn and corazan also contain more carotenes, making the yellow color more present. 
when you compare emmer wheat breads to normal breads, uh, if you say that normal bread is white, you can see that emmer wheat is actually a bit darker, uh, a bit more gray. Then the dough handling properties. Uh, from einkorn, like I said before, it was very sticky. It was difficult to handle, but what, not impossible, of course. Uh, but some of the um, things that you have to do during the process should be done automatically, which was not always possible with einkorn because it was so sticky. The emmer wheat uh, was also sticky, but depended a lot on variety and harvest here, so some of the emmer wheat was easier to handle than others. And then finally, corazan was also still a bit sticky, but it was processable, everything could be done automatically, it was still machinable. So that brings me to my conclusion. There is an increasing interest in the ancient wheats, we saw that, which is why we started this project. So when we compare the three ancient wheats, we can see that einkorn is the most challenging of them because it has poor milling properties, so it has lower flower yields. Uh, it has a very light flower and a lot of was lost on the bran. So also the milk clogged a lot, so you had to stay there while milling. It has poor gluten strength, which you actually need. You need strong gluten to make a good bread. Uh, we also had bad dough properties there, uh, by which I mean that it was a bit more sticky, making it difficult to use in bread. But it's not impossible, of course. You just need to know what you're working with. You have to have some background knowledge. You have some experience. It's needed there. Then we have the emmer wheat quality, uh, depended a lot on variety and on harvest year. So some of the emmer wheat species, actually varieties, um, were closer in quality to einkorn, uh, while others were perfectly handleable. And then finally, Corazon has potential for the incorporation in bread and other bakery products because it actually had the best overall functional properties and other qualities the closest to bread wheat. So I said during my presentation as well that there was a difference in harvest year. So there was actually a significant difference, a statistical significant difference in harvest year for the test weight, the thousand kernel weight, the water absorptions and the gluten index. So I would like to conclude with a special thanks to Ghent University and University College of Ghent being the promoters of the project, but also Altergrain and my colleagues for supplying the Asian wheats, Alex Wieland for supplying emmer wheat uh, species, and uh, also Vlajo, the Flemish Agency for Innovation and Entrepreneurship for their financial support. So I thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me now, but you can also contact me later. Thank you.